As I'm sure you can imagine, over the course of a season, AJ and I get countless questions that are in regards to just about any topic you can think of relating to ATVs, side-by-sides. Now, some of these questions are a lot easier to answer than others. And the easiest question to answer of all is this, where should I go on an off-road vacation? The reason this question is so easy to answer is because there is no doubt one place in North America that puts all other off-road riding destinations to shame. From the trails, to the people, to the food, to the accommodations, whenever I get asked the above question, this one destination is my answer every time. Hatfield McCoy Trails in West Virginia is really nine different riding areas, each with their own unique personality, all underneath the umbrella of the Hatfield McCoy Trails network. My experience with Hatfield McCoy trails is extensive. I've ridden eight of the nine individual trail systems, some of them three, four, even five times. I've attended their National Trails Fest event, and I've sampled everything they have to offer in terms of accommodation, food, extracurricular activities, points of interest, and I've made some really excellent friends along the way. When I pick Hatfield McCoy Trails as my favorite off-road destination, it's a decision based on a huge quantity of experience. Today, I'd like to go over each individual trail system within the network and give an overview of what you can expect from that trail, some of the interesting places you need to visit while you're there, and what I think is unique and visit worthy of each one of them. Because there are so many trails, the easiest way to do this, I think, is to break the trail systems down into two smaller groups. The more northern trail systems, Bear Wallow, Rock House, Buffalo Mountain, Devil Ants, and Ivy Branch, and the systems located farther south in the state, Pinnacle Creek, Indian Ridge, Pocahontas, and Warrior. The first system I want to take a look at today is the first system I ever visited, Rock House. I have a lot of memories of this trail. I've been there numerous times, and I'm excited to share with you guys why I love it and why it's definitely worth going back, even for me, who's been there as many times as I have. My experience with Rock House goes way back to my very first trip to Hatfield McCoy. The town of Gilbert holds a very special place in my heart because it's where I was introduced to all of Hatfield McCoy. The people there are some of the best people you will ever meet. Every shop in town is welcoming and wants you to come in even when you're muddy, which was a surprise to me. Gilbert is also home of the Larry Joe Harless Community Center, which is the home base for their National Trails Fest event, something I've attended, I think, seven or eight times and is one of the most interesting and all-encompassing ATV jamboree types events that you will find in the entire country. The two towns connected to Rock House is obviously Gilbert, as I've mentioned, but also the town of Mann, which is an excellent destination if you're leaving from Gilbert to get to Mann for lunch and gas. Man itself includes lots of amenities, gas, food, lodging, anything you could possibly need. So depending on where you live in the country or where you're traveling from, you can either stay in Man or Gilbert, whichever one is closest to you, and take advantage of the entire Rock House trail system. Rock House gets its name from a large rock formation way up on top of one of the hills that looks like a great big rock house, but there's so much more to see on this trail. Numerous overlooks will give you vast expanses to see of all the West Virginia countryside. There's some interesting waterfalls, there's interesting historical places pertaining to mining and the history of West Virginia. It's an excellent spot to ride with trails that range from easy to most difficult, but most of them are on the more difficult or most difficult side of the spectrum. So if you're a rider who likes technical trails, this is where you should start. The next system I want to talk about is one I rode back in 2015 when it first opened, and it's called Devil Ants. Devil Ants is actually what connects Rock House and Buffalo Mountain, and without it, you couldn't get between the two places. But the interesting part about the Devil Ants trail system is the history that's involved in its area. Devil Ants is connected directly to the town of Matewan, and of all the places I've been in West Virginia, Matewan might just be my favorite because I love history so much. So many notable things happened in Matewan, including the beginnings of the mining wars, the Hatfield-McCoy feud, a lot of the situations happened right in the town of Matewan, and there's so much history right in that town that you can touch and feel. If you like history, this is the place to go. Back when I first started riding in Matewan, there was very little there in terms of amenities. Now though, there's some excellent restaurants, places to stay, it's an excellent place to stop for lunch if you're heading from Rock House or Buffalo Mountain, but no matter what, if you're in the area, you can't miss it. The trails on Devil Ants are more on the technical side, more of the advanced type of riding, though there are many easy trails as well. If you're starting from Rock House and you like technical riding, Devil Ants has to be part of your day-long trip. But I think the one aspect of the Devil Ants trail system that intrigued me the most, beyond anything else, was that the 
Hatfield Family Cemetery is located not too far off the trail. You can actually go visit where Devil Lance Hatfield himself is buried, um, along with all of his family members, and see their grave sites. You can see the Devil Lance statue with his back facing Kentucky. There's just so much touch and feel kind of history happening right in this trail system with the town of Matewan and the cemetery. This is a place that has captured me, and I would go back any day and spend a whole day there and never get bored. The third system of this three system chain is Buffalo Mountain. Now Buffalo Mountain is one of the systems I rode way back in the beginning, 12 or 13 years ago. And it's also the system I've ridden most recently, just at the end of last season with my uncle Rick, when we did some mountain biking, as well as some side-by-side -side riding and checking out the trails up there. Buffalo Mountain is a very interesting trail system as well, because it is one of the oldest in the network. It connects to the town of Mate One through the Devil Ant system, and then again onto Rock House. But it also has a lot of interesting history history in it as well. Things connected to the Matewan Massacre, to the mining wars, very interesting things to see and do around there. The trails, of course, are why you're there. The vast majority of Buffalo Mountain trails are in the more difficult to most difficult categories. And in fact, 76% of the trails fit into that category. So again, these three networks are very much where you'd go if you like technical riding or challenging yourself. Though, again, there are easy trails in each of them to keep the entire family happy. There are towns connected directly to Buffalo Mountain, the town of Del Barton and the town of Williamson. Now, Williamson and Del Barton are a little bit larger places that offer more than enough amenities to keep you going all day or all week long. Some other places to see along the trail would be some old mining equipment that still exists out there. And there's also some mining tunnels that you can check out that exist since the old, old mining days when the mines were hand dug. The fourth trail system I want to talk about today is one of the original three Hatfield systems. It's called Bear Wallow. It is located basically right off the side of the city of Logan, which is not a small town like many of the other connections that you make in Hatfield McCoy. It is an actual city with city-like brand name amenities from fast food places to brand name hotels. There are also little lodges and things you can stay at, but if you want to stay at a brand name hotel that you're familiar with, there are those options there as well. I rode Bear Wallow uh, for the first time in 2013 with a bunch of local guys from around here, a local riding crew called the Wheeler Nation Crew, and we had an absolute blast on that trip. Bear Wallow is known for having a mix of trails, but the majority of them are in the more to most difficult categories. So again, if you're a technical rider and you like those types of trails, this is a good choice for you. And it's also one of two trail systems in the Hatfield McCoy network that is open to ORV vehicles or basically Jeeps and rock buggies. The trails here are a mix of damp lower sections and then some steep climbs. There's some rock sections that are pretty impressive as well. But I think the biggest part about Bear Wallow that makes it so great is that you can literally access a city. So let's say you're riding with your family. You know, you wanna go to a place where they're gonna feel not isolated. They're gonna feel like they're in an area where there is amenities, where it's more familiar to them. This is a great place to start. Neat things to do there, some neat things to see. There's also some neat history surrounding the area as there seems to be with all Hatfield McCoy trail systems. Definitely the biggest draw in my opinion for Bear Wallow is the more technical trails that are going to keep your adrenaline up a little bit but not so hard that you couldn't take your family in a four-seater or you and mom drive two-seaters with the kids and then also the city of Logan that gives you all the amenities you could possibly need to feel comfortable and have a great holiday. The final system I want to talk about today that's grouped in with the more northerly trails of the Hatfield McCoy network was open and then was closed and is now back open again and that is Ivy Branch. I rode Ivy Branch in 2014 right when it actually opened with a friend of the show Shelby Mahan and we had an awesome time riding Ivy Branch and what sets Ivy Branch apart that it's located more north in the state, but it's located not 10 minutes from Charleston, West Virginia. So a full-on major city with full-on restaurants, brand name restaurants, hotels, shopping malls, you name it, Charleston has it. And you can stay in Charleston and ride Ivy Branch on your side-by-side -side and then head back to Charleston for a night on the town that would rival any city. That's what really, in my opinion, sets Ivy Branch apart in a big way. But the trails themselves, are also unique to the rest of the Hatfield McCoy network. Ivy Branch is one of only two systems at Hatfield McCoy that allow ORVs. Trails are tailored to suit those 
vehicles, as well as side-by-sides and ATVs. So when you go to Ivy Branch, you can go there with any number of vehicles and have an awesome experience while staying in a major city. Things that stood out in my mind about the trails was that there is an excellent mix of trails. A number of easy trails that you can take your family on that are more like kind of dirt roads. So they're nice and easy for the family. They're not intimidating, they're not scary. And then you can take some off route shoot trails that would be what I would consider expert trails or beyond expert trails. Things with massive rocks, uh, massive obstacles, places that you had to winch to get through, there was no other way, and obviously places that only rock buggies and massive Jeeps are capable of going. Ivy Branch was closed for a little while due to some land issues. It is now back open again, much to the chagrin of anybody who likes off-road riding and especially the guys who like Jeeps and, and rock buggies and things like that. So we're very pleased to see that and see that Hatfield McCoy you know, doesn't give up on a trail system, fights to keep the trails open when people fall in love with them and that's what's happened with Ivy Branch. So that wraps up our first section of Hatfield McCoy trails and the overviews and what you can expect and things that we liked about each one. This was the northern trails that we talked about today. On the next episode, we're gonna talk about the four more southern trails as well as one new trail that's opening here in the near future. So stay tuned for that coming up next week. If you've enjoyed this episode of Dirt Tracks TV, definitely reach down and click the like button and please consider subscribing to our channel if you wanna see more content just like this. We appreciate it a lot and stay tuned for more stuff coming from Dirt Tracks in the very near future.